question that most of us ask is, but this morning, I just want to talk about these five things real quick. Of making sense out of the story. The first one is, do what the Lord tells you to do. Do what the Lord tells you to do. The text picks up just after the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. The Bible says that at the completion of that event, Jesus told his disciples, get into the boat. I want you to go before me to the other side. The implication here is that he was going to meet them on the other side. Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side of the lake. And they obeyed. The disciples did what the Lord told them to do. And on the way to the other side, they ran into a storm. The Bible says they were on their way to the other side. The Bible says uh, they were doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. They were where God wanted them to be. Performing the act God wanted them to perform. And the Bible says a storm arose. This passage shows us you can do exactly what God asks and still face a storm. Storms get a 
our attention. The storms, uh, they make you take note that somebody is trying to talk to you. Many times God allows storms and allows the Lord to speak to us in such a way that we'll hear him when we don't hear him in the calm. You know, some folks, they just can't stand with this quiet. I think about my father-in-law, and y'all did not tell him I said this. But he has the TV blasted loud, the radio on, and whatever else is on in the house, and then he yells to you, sitting right next to him. Hey, you nothing, yes. And if you turn something off, hey, wait, turn it off, turn it off. Can't function when it's quiet and calm. I have a tendency to do that too. I was laying on the couch one day, and I was watching TV. And you know how you watch TV and sometimes the TV begins to watch. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's what happened. When my shade walked in the room and she turned to you, I said, hey, turn it up on me. Right. You speak that, no, I'm not. <laughs> sometimes we don't hear it in the car. But things are going well, and you got it going on. God has to call and get appointments. But when the storms are raging in your life, right. you're down on your knees. Right. Now, I ain't got time to eat. I'm praying. Right. Now, I don't want to know why I got to pray. Right. Why is it when folks get happy? They ain't going to go. always want to get some water. That's just a side. <laughs> Storms get our attention. We become focused. Jesus said, be a good cheer in his eye. Be not afraid. Have a good attitude. Don't fret. Don't be afraid. Some of us in the storm this morning. And I just stopped by to tell you, be a good cheer. Don't be afraid. Don't fret. Don't be afraid. Jesus is right there. All right. He's right here with you All right. in the storm. When Jesus says, it is I, he gives the most comforting phrase to any Jewish believer. Right. Because the phrase, it is I, in the original language literally means, I am. All right. I am that I am. It's the same phrase God used when he talked to Moses on Mount Sinai. Yeah. He said to somebody this morning, I am in the midst of your storm. The problem with the children of Israel was not a lack of understanding about what God could do. The problem was they forgot who God They've been enslaved for 400 years. The patriarchs were dead. And God said, tell them I am. Because if they know who I am, they'll know what I can do. I just believe someone has forgotten who God is and what God can do this morning. Did you forget that he woke you up this morning?
immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said to him, You are the little thing. Why did you die? He got out of the boat and did something great to the glory of God. But he took his eyes off what God was doing and focused on the circumstances right. and the situation and began to seek. And then he cried out, Lord, save me. Just uh, come right there. Many of us, we so holy. We have these long drawn out prayers. <laughs> we have these formal prayers. But Peter had a quick prayer. He just said, Lord, save me. He didn't go into a formal prayer. The God who sits high and looks low. Lord, I come with my head bowed, arms stretched to thee, humbly no other no how. He didn't come with all. All he said was, Lord, save me. Save me. And sometimes that's how we need to be. We just need to say, Lord, get me out of this mess. Well, the phrase, Lord, save me, is an extreme passive voice. Which implies he tried on his own to save himself. All right, all right. And he could not. Peter was a fisherman. And as tradition says, his father was a fisherman. And nobody grows up in a house full of fishermen on those big boats, dragging nets, working around water without knowing how to swim. Right. So I just believe he tried every stroke. Backstroke. Don't stroke. Sorry. Yeah. 